On behalf of the family, we want to say welcome to everyone who took the time to be with us this morning for this auspicious occasion, long overdue. Yes, yes. You know, when I when I got the call from Derek Ventu, who told me about the idea for this and how much he's thinking of it, and then asked me for my little involvement this morning, I said absolutely yes. Because Dr. Lamiel Stanislaus, you know, any, anytime you say the name Dr. Lamiel Stanislaus, the first thing you see is that smile on his face. Yeah. That man liked to smile. But then again, that was the epitome of the man. A man who left the shores of uh, Pity Martinique many moons ago, went to Grenada, Matthew. went to school in Grenada, then migrated to these shores. And over the years, has developed and cultured a life for himself and his family that extended to the community and created a legacy that today is still immortal. And the unveiling today is a manifestation of that immortality of the great Dr. Lamuel Stanislaus. Let's put our hands together for his memory. And as we begin the ceremony today, we'd like to call on uh, Cheryl Vincent, one of the loveliest voices of Grenada, Carrie Akou and Pity Martley, to uh, sing the national anthem. Ms. Vincent. Good morning, everyone. Thank you. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the
one people, one family. God bless our nation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Cheryl. Now we'd like to call on Monsignor Paul Jervis for the invocation. Good morning. Good morning. What a wonderful day it is for us to come here and to celebrate the memory of a great man, a man who made the way so that many people can follow and become successful. This was a man who made a way for us in so many ways. He made ways for the Caribbean people to get a better life, to enjoy their rights here in the United States. He made ways for African-American people to take fully in charge of their destiny. He made ways in the Roman Catholic Church where a lot of blacks were not really given their own rights. So it is only fitting that we name a street because the street is the way, the way we use in transportation to move from one place to another. And with Dr. Stanislaus, laws, he helped us to move beyond our limitations and our confines to a greater place. So as we bow our heads in prayer, we ask God's blessing. Lord God, you are the father of all goodness, and we thank you for Dr. Lamuel Sanis Laws and for his involvement in our community, in making our community a better place, a place where everyone can enjoy their rights, a place where everyone can take their place in our society. And as we come on this auspicious day, we pray that this street sign, which is named after him, will remind us that he made a way for us and we should follow after him so that we will be able to enjoy all the benefits of our society. And so may your blessings come upon this sign and may your blessings come upon all of us who are so privileged to remember the memory of Dr. Lamuel Stanislaus and God's blessing on this street, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you, Monsignor. You know, one of the visions of Dr. Stanislaus when he was an ambassador, and I'm sure that's something that he held with him for quite some time with the advent of the natural disasters hurricane ivan even before that jamaica then haiti <clears throat> dr Stanislaus had that vision that the caribbean diaspora here in new york with the economic power that it possesses should all come together to create that fund that great fund that living fund so that when disasters struck wherever in the caribbean we can immediately go to that fund to help Many of you will remember him on Eastern Parkway on Labor Day with that big water bottle. The symbolism of it was for us to create that fund. And uh, today, in reality, it has not come to fruition. But I'm sure that every single politician in here today would agree that that dream is still worth the dignity of a reality. And with that in mind, we'd like to call on some speakers to reminisce on Dr. Stanislaus and it's fitting to start with his son who carries his name, one of his many sons who carries his name, Lamuel Stanislaus and the rest of the family. I want to thank everyone for coming here today. It's a beautiful day, a day that God has made. All right, as again, I want to thank you for the support that you're showing us today. The first thing I like to do is read a short statement. She does it short and sweet. This is from my little mama, all right? She says, you have given me, you've given my husband a great honor. 
And I thank you very much. All right? And she does. And we do too. All right? So that's going to start. Now, let me just start off by saying uh, it's sort of a hectic period for me. All right? I sort of go, was going crazy. I know it drove a lot of people crazy. My apologies. All right? Uh, but I think I've steadied myself now that I've had a couple of drinks. <laughs> so I think I've retained my nerves. All right? Uh, I'd just like to say, uh, uh, welcome, Councilman Eugene, uh, for uh, setting this up. You know, he went to uh, the district uh, to uh, get them to pass the, uh, uh, just approve, rather, the uh, re co naming of Rutland Road. <coughs> All right, Dr. Lammers, and so we want to thank you very much. And if, I could, if I could just uh, mention a few people who are here today. That's Mr. Aiden Paso, he's the Grenada, uh, from the Grenada Council. And we have from uh, Congressman Yvette's Claw, who present a, a, a letter or citation. Her name is Anita Taylor, Ms. Taylor. Thank you for coming. All right, so uh, as I'm going forward now, I'd like to talk before I talk about my father, oh, I forgot one thing. This is my Aunt Judith, all right? 93 years old. Oh, I'm sorry, 103, as my sister points out, 103. She was not, she said she was not going to miss this. By hook or by crook. All she did was a ride. And my cousin, Dr. Joe Raddick, gave her the ride. So thank you, Joe. Right. So I just want to mention too, it's also here, the uh, former borough president, Mr. Marky Nardewin. Uh, we have the uh, Justice Sylvia Hines Raddick. We have her husband, Dr. Joseph Raddick. And I hope I've, I haven't forgotten anyone, all right? If I did, you beat me up after the ceremony. <laughs> oh, Dr. Hassett, is, is she here? <laughs> forgive me, forgive me. I, I don't know how I've forgotten you, all right? I want to say Dr. Hassett is very helpful, contributed mightily uh, to this effort, all right? So I wanted to just say something about my mother, though, before I talk about my father. And I won't be too long, I assure you. Because I can't speak, I, I, I don't know how I'm, I'm, how I'm up here now, you know? As I said, uh, I might need another drink, I don't know. <laughs> All right, but as I say, my mother, you know, she took good care of us. Uh, you know, she was very supportive to my father. He always said, though, that uh, uh, she accepted him and dealt with him with all his idiosyncrasies. All right? Uh, so, you know, she was a great help, a great mother. And uh, as I think about it, it was very protective. And going back, you know, uh, uh, when I was a kid, you know, I thought I was cool. I went to a party, very pretty girl. It was her party. My mother told me I go to the party, and I'll be home at nine o'clock. I said, "Oh, I do that." <laughs> anyway, I went to the party, and I went there, today, and uh, nine o'clock came. I said, that's cool, everything's cool, you know? 9.15, I see her walking in. I, 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 I'm in a panic, right? So I'm looking for what to do. So I go to a table, right? I'm not hiding, right? And she found me. I said, boy, get up from that table, right? Get home, right? So I endured that, shall I say, humiliation, and I was never the same. But however, that's just a joke. My mother was really great. She took care of all of us, always loved us, always supported us. Now getting to my father. Uh, my father, well, certainly my father is not like me. Very eloquent, very dignified, 
very classy, charismatic. Unfortunately, I have been categorized, my speaking style, deadly dull. Right? It hurts to say it, but it's the truth. Right? Anyway, my dad was a, and I listened terribly. He taught me so much. Uh, he loved me and my, my siblings and I very much. And uh, as I think about it, you know, it's a, it is a great loss. You know, he, he, he provided tremendous guidance to my siblings and myself, my uh, nieces and nephews. And I think, you know, he, he, he certainly loved Grenada. Good God did he love Grenada, right? And he loved the Caribbean and its people and its music. And he loved the politics of Grenada. And he came to love this adopted nation of his, the United States of America. And he loved it too. So I wanted to say this. Now we're naming this block, co-naming rather, the Dr. Standard, Dr. Lerner Standard for his way. And as such, uh, I want to say this one. Um, basically, I'm plagiarizing what my little brother Eugene uh, uh, was going to say, but I'm going to say it. I'll deal with him later. <laughs> but he said this, which I think all of us are going to agree, as my siblings and myself. This block, Rutland Road, no matter what its name, meant a lot to us. It nurtures us all. All right? All of these people supported us. The ones who are here now and the ones who have left us. All right? And we couldn't have done a lot of what we've done without the people of this block, all right? There's a lot of them here. I don't want to mention too many names because I get myself in trouble, all right? I'm seeing Mrs. Blake, wonderful person. Get me in line. In fact, she came and said, when I was messing up, she said to me, Lamb, I want to pick a bone with you. I never heard anything like that. It's a good term, though, so I use it uh, frequently. I pick a lot of bones. But as I was saying, the block really nurtures us. Uh, as I walk down the street, I can see you know, certain kids, and boy did we have kids. We had so many kids. I mean, we played stickball, punchball, jump rope, whatever it was we did. And we were very creative in terms of our, you know, what we did to, uh, uh, in terms of our game. So this was a great place, a great box, and we're very thankful you know, that you were here. I'm very thankful that I'm here. I'm here over 60 years, all right? And I wouldn't go any place else. So I want to say thank you very much for this great outpouring and showing and uh, support. Thank you very much. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. For this is indeed a glorious day, because we know that our Father is dwelling amongst us, proud and exuberant. This is who he was, this type of a group of people showing love, support, and understanding of the uh, of the ties that exist between all people. His mission was giving of himself for the advancement of his people. So we as a family would be remiss if we didn't say to each and every one of you, thank you, thank you, thank you. For it is you who provided Lamuel Arnold Stanislaus the platform to express his belief 
of what the American dream truly is, and that is a people of all backgrounds, immigrant people of all cultures, creeds, and colors can coexist, still maintaining harmony in their unique individuality in these United States of America. So today, we thank you for the contribution to the fulfillment of his dream. And today, we memorialize his name, honor, and legacy on Rutland Road between Flatbush and Bedford Avenues. And I conclude with, the weeping may last for a night, joy cometh in the morning. And I say amen, thank you. Well, thank you very much uh, for this honor. Um, I'm going to plagiarize a few statements from my father. Um, although I have the tendency to be loquacious and, exp and expansive, I'm going to govern myself by the five B's. Be brief, be bright, and be seated. <laughs> Another one my father used to say is, when asked to speak, all that is necessary is a good beginning and a good ending, and the closer, closer the ending is to the beginning, the better your remarks. <laughs> However, my favorite one is this. Uh, my father used to say, when asked to make an address, an address should be like a woman's dress. It should be long enough to cover the subject matter, but short enough to be arousing, stimulating, exciting, <laughs> thought-provoking, and memorable. <laughs> So I'd like to start my remarks by uh, saying welcome to all the dignitaries and to all our neighbors on Rutland Road. And Lamb, um, there were a few uh, things that I think you didn't completely mention. My, fa my, mom my father used to always thank my mother for, for um, accepting him with all his idiosyncrasies and idiotic behaviors. So I just want to clarify that. But, okay, now um, i just like to start my remarks. Um, my dear dignitaries and families of Rutland Road, my name's Eugene Stanislaus. I'm the son of Dr. Lamia Stanislaus. On behalf of my family, especially our beautiful mother, Beryl Stanislaus, we extend a myriad of thanks and appreciation for renaming this wonderful block of Rutland Road, Dr. Manuel Stanislaus Wade. In, in um, like I said, pretty in acknowledgement of my father. Indeed, Rutland Road is by far one of the nicest blocks in the Leffitt's Garden neighborhood. For my father, it epitomized a joyous, loving, brilliant, radiant, proud, and multifaceted people. It was an honor and a privilege for him to live on such a beautiful block. Forgive me. And um, this block really epitomizes the statement that it takes a village to raise a child. The consistent love and supervision to us as children has had such a positive impact on the, on the people we are today. My brother Lamb, Galen, John, and my sister Karen, and me, has been shaped in some way or form to the people we are due to the supervision and love of the people of Rutland Road. Today, Rutland Road is being renamed Dr. Lamuel Stanislaus Way. However, this is a tribute to all of the families of Rutland Road who shared in his love of strong family and with contribution to community. Our family truly believes 
that Dr. Emanuel Stanislaus Way will always represent the Rutland Road family. And we know that Dr. Stanis, Dr. Emanuel Stanislaus Way could also be called the Rutland Road family way. My family is proud and humble as our father receives this, pri this, pri this prodigious. See, I don't have the, lib. I'm not as good as my father. In fact, my father wouldn't even have papers prepared. In fact, he's probably looking down from heaven and saying, boy, you mean in all these years, you've seen me, boy, boy, you cannot make the marks without a piece of paper. He would say, boy, perhaps what would happen if you left your papers in your car. He said, you'd be fumbling, stumbling, and bumbling trying to get the words out. So, Daddy, from a, from a high, please forgive me. My family is proud and humbled as our father receives this prodigious tribute today. I feel confident that he is illumined in glory and watching down from a higher authority. See, my father wouldn't be stumbling and fumbling with all these pages if he was there. But anyway, in conclusion, I leave you with a poignant memory of my father's ability to deliver an eloquent speech ending with poetry by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, which I believe pertains to raising and maintaining a strong family. The heights of great men reached and kept were not attained by sudden flight, but those while their companions, while their companions slept, toiled upward in the night. Once again, thank you for this uh, prodigious tribute to my father. God bless you all, and to God be the glory for all the things he has done. Thank you. Thank you very much, all the family members with the great memories of Dr. Lamuel Stanislaus. Before we proceed, just like to acknowledge the presence of uh, one of our dear playwrights and storytellers, author, band leader, and uh, of a very good lineage, Ricardo Keynes Douglas is with us. Ricardo? And he has a big show tomorrow at Tropical Reflections. Right, Jerry? All right? Had a very good show in Washington. And uh, congratulations for that, keeping the flag of Grenada high. All right, and I see your former Consul General, Ronald uh, Pappy Charles, is here with us. Mr. Charles, thank you for your presence. All right, speaking of uh, uh, playwriting and uh, storytelling, I'm going to present to you one of the griots, so to speak, in our community here in Brooklyn, New York. A Grenadian from the heart, a Grenadian, I call him a Campesh Wood Grenadian. <laughs> they are a hard Grenadian. All right, that's Wendell Riggs who's gonna do a poem for us today. Wendell? Pleasant good day to everybody. It's a wonderful occasion. Dr. Lamuel Stannis Claus. What can we say about a man who selflessly labored to ease humanity's plight? What can we say about Dr. Lamuel Stannis Claus? A man who possessed a powerful vocabulary. I want to repeat that. <laughs> a powerful vocabulary he used to unite people. A compassionate man, endowed with the gifts of love, eloquence, intelligence, generosity, and empathy. A devotion that fanned the fires of harmony, and like a soothing, pretty magnetic breeze, refreshed the faces of those who are fortunate to know him or to know about him. Many in the United States, Grenada and elsewhere, remember his immense contribution geared advance humanity's cause. What can we say about this distinguished community activist and diplomat who served with such fervor and dedication? in his role as Grenada's ambassador to the United Nations, whose comforting words calmed the fears of those who, from many nations who sat on his dentist chair, 
the profession. He mastered, he mastered the profession for which he gained the admiration and accolades. He who cemented friendships with people from all walks of life, solid bonds that stood the test of time, and will linger with the street dedicated to him. What can we say about the man who brought together people from the various political spectrums to break bread and encourage them to discard bickering and work together for the common good? What can we say about the man who sees the initiative to create rivers of hope with his burning optimism, inspiration and faith? He was not distracted by those bent on creating seas that divide. What can we say about a man whose humor was so refreshing in notable characteristic of his personality? What can we say about a man who personified the revitalizing warmth of the tropical sun? Warm that he did not keep himself to be buried in isolation, but shared it in light, the fires of kindness in the New York community and beyond. What can we say? about a man whose modesty was evident and despite his scholastic accomplishments, he paused to mingle with those who were not as fortunate to climb the academic ladder. Such humility indeed is a distinctive mark of greatness. What can we say is what many have already said. The words of commendation from the halls of the United States Congress, from Queen Elizabeth II, the praise that flowed from the lips of statesmen and women, indeed from President Obama himself, from leaders of various countries, some organizations he supported or helped to form over the years, from friends and family, touched by his love of humanity. What can we say? We say we love and respected Dr. Lamiel's tennis claws, and we are thankful that he held our hands and he walked with us. His name will live on when we walk on the street, a street deservedly dedicated to him. Thank you very much. And I just want to thank Mr. Derek Bento for the part he played in bringing about this event. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Wendell. Now we'd like to invite uh, some officials to make a few comments. Begin with uh, council member of District 40, Dr. Matthew Eugene who has been instrumental uh, in the organizing of this, too. And Dr. Eugene, welcome and thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Good morning. As you know, my name is Matthew Eugene, and I'm uh, your city council member. I'm your humble servant. And I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to serve you. Today is a great day. And the time, the weather is auspicious to this uh, momentous occasion. And I want to take the opportunity to thank, first of all, God. 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 For the opportunity that he gave us, and first uh, to the family of Dr. Talis Las, to have this outstanding leader in their family and also for the opportunity that God gave us, all of us from the Caribbean, regardless of where we came from, and from New York, to benefit from the intelligence, from the leadership of a great man, Dr. Samuel Talislas. And I want to take the opportunity also to thank and all the children of the family, you're going to allow me to say that, on behalf of the 48th district, on, the, on behalf of the great city of New York, and on behalf of all of us from the community, you're going to allow me to say, Mommy Judith, thank you so very much. Thank you for what doctor has done for all of us. He couldn't do it alone. As they say all the time, when there is a great man, there's always a greater woman. Thank you so very much. Thank you. And I want to take the opportunity also because I feel that we are blessed to have with us at Judith, 103 years old. This is a blessing. 
But I want to ask you a question. Don't say that to your, you know, to, to the children. Give me the secret. <laughs> so, I want to thank also all the uh, elected officials who are here. Especially, I want to thank, uh, you know, Mr. Bukrin, an outstanding leader and inspiration, Mighty Marco. We thank you so much. Let's put our hands together for him. Thank you. And I know that uh, uh, the public advocate, Germany William, was supposed to be here. And I see the mother. Thank you. We want to thank uh, Germany also. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. I'm glad that he was here. Thank you very much. And I won't be able to mention everybody because for the fact of time. But I want to uh, mention also a great leader in the community. You all know him. He's working so much in the community. He was a good friend of the Dr. Talisa, Dr. Wojcicki. Thank you for what you are doing, and Dr. Ida, thank you so much also. And I want also to take the opportunity to take, you know, uh, a, a man of God. I, I'm going to mention, single him out because I want him to continue to pray for me because uh, prayer is so important. Uh, Bishop Wiley, thank you so much. Cecil Wiley, thank you so much. Thank you. When I look at the audience, and I see so many great leaders, that means Dr. Talismas was really an outstanding leader. He inspired all of us over here. And I can tell you, I had the opportunity to know him, to meet with him, and to be with him several times, and several events. And I can tell you, even before I was elected, I think that I was inspired by what he was doing. I saw him everywhere, in any organization, any activities, way before I was elected. And as a Caribbean, also myself, as an immigrant, I feel proud. I feel very proud. When you see somebody coming from the Caribbean, going through, through all the struggle to survive in the United States, to raise children, and to succeed, and to continue to uplift the community, we got to say, praise the Lord for that. And today, this event is to pay tribute to him and to thank also the family members and all the children for what he has done for us. But I'm touched by one thing. Mr. Talismas Jr. was talking about his father. This is exactly what we kind Caribbean people we have deep inside of. Family values. Family values. Respect for mommy, daddy. And I'm sure, and I'm convinced, that all those uh, gentlemen who are here, who have been talking about the fathers, they succeed because of the family values that Dr. Talismas instilled in all of them. And I want to take the opportunity to say that, please, if you want to pay tribute to Dr. Talismas, really, all of us from the Caribbean, remember what Mr. Talisman Jr. was saying, what he was talking about his father. I'm going to ask you to continue to fight and to do everything that you can do to instill in your children all Caribbean family values. Don't let them influence by this country influence and peer pressure because we want them to succeed and to be inspired to become also a successful uh, leader in the community. I'm going to conclude by saying that I was proud to introduce legislation to co-name the sweet Dr. Samuel Talisas Wade. And I'm so pleased. And I want to commend also the sons, all of you who have been working together with me, pushing me to make sure that this happened. And I hope that people who didn't know Dr. Talismas, influence and accomplishment, when they pass by, when they see that sign, they will go to fight out and they will say, oh my God, he did deserve it. And I, they will be inspired to continue to walk wherever they came from, to make sure they contribute to this great city, the city of New York, to this great bow, the bow of Brooklyn, to this great country, United States, and other for them also to be part of the fabric and the success, the greatness of the United States of America. Thank you very much and God bless you.
I remember the first time that he had to MC a program, he came to me, to the office, and asked, can you give me a few tips? <laughs> and I remember the tip I gave him was, when you're asked to speak, all that is necessary is a good beginning and a good ending. But the closer the ending is to the beginning, the better your remarks. <laughs>